Hurricane Ian plowed into Florida's Gulf Coast with catastrophic force on Wednesday, unleashing howling winds, torrential rains and a treacherous surge of ocean surf that made it one of the most powerful U.S. storms in recent years. Crashing ashore as a category for hurricane with sustained winds of up to 241 km per hour, Ian quickly transformed an idyllic stretch of sandy beaches and coastal towns into a disaster zone inundated by seawater. Early video images of the storm's fury on local TV and social media showed floodwaters sweeping away cars, nearly reaching rooftops in some communities and the ruins of homes as palm trees were bent almost in half. Up to 30 inches of rain is forecast to fall on parts of central Florida as the storm moves inland, threatening to cause extensive flash floods. Really? Nearly 2 million homes and businesses statewide were without power as of an hour before sunset, utilities reported. The region around the landfall is home to miles of sandy beaches, scores of resort hotels and numerous mobile home parks, a favorite with retirees and vacationers alike. An hour after landfall, video posted on social media and TV news outlets showed water fueled by storm surges rushing through several communities. The town of Fort Myers Beach was nearly submerged by floodwaters. A view of Sanibel Island posted on Twitter showed the ocean sweeping over a seawall into a resort hotel swimming pool. Other video from the island showed roads inundated by the storm surge, rising to the tops of street signs. In terms of its sustained wind speeds, which peaked at 155 miles per hour before landfall, Ian ranks as one of the most ferocious hurricanes to strike the U.S. mainland in recent years. By comparison, Hurricane Michael came ashore in Florida's Panhandle in 2018 with steady winds of 155 miles per hour, while Ida last year packed sustained winds of 150 miles per hour when it landed in Louisiana. Even as Ian lashed the coast in the final hours before it swept ashore, authorities warned residents it was too late for anyone who had yet to evacuate to safely do so. Earlier this week, more than 2.5 million residents had been told to evacuate. Hey guys, um, this is the current condition in my house. Doug Coe of Venice was one of those who chose to ignore warnings and stay put. Most residents abandoned the area's mobile home parks, taking refuge in local schools and other facilities converted to emergency shelters. The area's numerous assisted living facilities were mostly evacuated, too.